Free in charge of this one is Jim Stokes, who gets us underway. And a fumble. So you want to talk about a final and some nerves, you have it right from the start. Yeah, Brad Williams certainly showing signs of nerves out there. Can't blame the young fellow. It's been a very, very impressive start to the match here this afternoon. A lot of pressure on all players, plenty of pressure on Jimmy Stokes. I'm sure he's a lot better than blokes that were handling the game the other night. <laughs> Thought we might manage to get through this final without a mention of Wednesday night. Short side. New Zealand married right from the start. Nearly steal it. Edwards, only inches away. They will settle it down through Mike Luke. Hands off, hands off him. Get your hands off him. Stokes trying to keep them apart, and they come up with the fumble. Lock on by Green, no advantage. But Stokes will come up with the first mistake against New Zealand Murray. Plenty of intensity in this game so far, Graham. Referee is going to have to make sure he keeps both these sides apart because they're firing into one another straight away. Stay there, Graham. Both are there, really keen. He's played well throughout this tournament. He is a player that Murray will have to watch. There it is. Trying to change the angle when he dropped that one, Fred Morunga. He was under some pressure as they moved up quickly. Now they will try and edge away to get out of this danger area. Fired! Hands off! Hands off! Ben Fay. And another man to impress this week in the back row, Jerry Susu. He's a good player, big rangy fella. Plenty of aggression about him. Final! Let him up! I say, Lowe, I'm looking forward to something to restarting the career from oh, reserve grade, if you like, for Hytro Wakasini as well, back into the big time. Yeah, well, he's certainly been a consistent performer for the Warriors. I would have liked to have seen him up there that's earlier zero. on in the year. I think he's been playing very, very well. He wouldn't let the club down, that's for sure. Ricky Henry copped a swinging oh, yeah, arm in there from up, Aaron Whittaker over the top. That's good. Another Warriors player who's played well in reserve grade. Come to me, come to me. Exceptional, actually. Mike Luke and David Pierce from the back row doing plenty of work to get them down towards the 30. Through the hands of Frank Watney and then out for Ramsey. And they still keep it alive now. David Pierce, short ball up. But going nowhere is Shane Edwards, finished off quickly by Ocassini. Clark All on. trying to wait this into the end goal it may not in the end be a problem for Coglin. and he will quickly try to go back to the 20 <laughs> bit stop start there for Whitaker and also Richard Stewart Susu well and truly over that advantage line just standing back a little Clear paying the price for it and they will Must pay plenty in the penalty now and first chance keep behind him, keep for the New Zealand him. 13 down in opposition territory yeah they have got good field position now they've got six chances with the ball first up here we'll be able to see what they can do Coglin, very good play when he injects himself into the back line but this guy here a far he's I think he's a powerful player really underrated Williams wants it, gets it, sends Ocassini on his way. Hold, hands off! Whitaker asking for Hanare to continue in the same direction. Hold. Opens it up for the back line. Williams and Whitaker to work it out wide. Looking across for runners. Dummying! There was half a chance Not if Harding could have hung on to that. Stellati may have ended up with a free run to the corner. It's obviously a planned move and it certainly looked very impressive. Gary Campbell to spend a lot of time working with his players. Two hands off. Wait till it's gone. Just another look at it for you. Would have been a case of catching and passing just about in the one movement. Fumble now, and it gives the New Zealand 13 another crack at it. Held, leave them, that's one. Straight up the middle, Ben Fay. Hands off, clear. Already the 
nerves showing against both sides. Hanare came from a long way back end strongly. Straight into Ramsey. Whitaker calling for a switch back the other way. Coglin is cut out. Doreen likewise trying to send Stellati to the corner, but there is tons of cover. Did not get that ball back into the field of play in time, says the touch judge. Probably took the wrong options in that particular case, throwing those cutout passes because they had the numbers there. Ended up with three defenders being over there on one and really nowhere to go. Replay suggesting that that ball should have still been alive back on the inside. But then we don't want to talk about touch judges, do we? New Zealand Maori to battle it out of their own 20. Ramsey. One you would expect in a tough final to keep his head nice and cool. Let's get on the game. Well, he's an inspirational player. And... Great run from David Pearce. Equally good tackle also from Coglin. Wide now for Ricky Henry. Try to step in the end, just climbed right over the top of Blair Harding. Shane Edwards. Ding Clark. Cannot get away from Williams. Manages to keep one hand free though. And send Kingy on his way. Likewise now back in for Kennedy. Keen to shift the ball. Ramsey opting down the short side. Somebody needs to climb. And doing the trick is the New Zealand 13 through Mike Doreen. Coglin. That's one. The other side really climbing into their right rhythm at the moment. Not really being allowed to, Graham, I don't think, because the defence has been so sound, moving up very, very quickly. Plenty of energy still around at this stage, only 11, 11 minutes into the game, so, well, seven minutes into the game, I mean, so... Three, come to me, Green, still, come to still, me. Still uh, plenty of energy, plenty of enthusiasm. Ben Fay. That's four. Doing a lot of work in the hit-up area. Foa. Standing, pushing the ball right. back. Not such a good ball back That's for Whitaker. Ramsey with a hand in there, trying to upset the play of the ball. Williams. All on. Sitting up nice and easy for Charlie Kennedy. That's zero. Plenty of players impressing in this week of the Oceania Challenge. But plenty of players that are probably going to go back to some Super League clubs nice and tired after a lot of games as well. There's certainly plenty of ask, plenty ask of the players during this particular tournament. And it's a credit to them really that they can keep going and play each game with such enthusiasm and, and uh, determination. Brian Hanari there with the headgear on. Gee, I'm more impressed with that guy every time I see him play. Not only is he a good, good runner, but he knows how to tackle and tackle well. Morunga. Edging over go. halfway. Barlow. Sitting it up for Luke. Watanay. Mike Luke. Most of these sides seem to rely very heavily on their back rowers. Barlow looked one way, then the other. Didn't have anybody to unload to. Now he does. Ball's put down, though, by Ohio and Stellati with the dregs to come back past his own 40. Occasini. Almost like both sides needing to take charge up the middle, find a bit of go forward, as they say, lower before they start to spread this ball. Yeah, well, I think maybe the idea would be to spread it a little earlier because uh, particularly when the defence is as tight and as efficient as it, as it is now, the best thing you can do, I think, shift the ball around. Try and tie that defence out. Williams sandwiched Hands off by Shane Edwards and also Mike Luke. The forward standing for a long time. Hanare trying to get there in support. Last tackle, Whitaker. Back across the ruck. Doreen cannot hang on to it. Ohio will bring it away. And Ocasini flew in, trying to make the big shoulder charge. Well, he undressed him anyway. Edwards. One. 
Nice roll of play now for New Zealand Maori. Kennedy fighting to get to his feet. Clark. Henry. Something's got to give as we just go past 10 minutes in this final. Ramsey. Second time on the inside goes to Watanay. Moranga. support here at Carlaw. Grab the first try. Well, a good example of Mary Rugby League here. They support one another. They can all offload the ball. A change of angle there. Standing up in the tackle. This was a good break here. Back, backed up by Edwards. Lummy Newton up in the sky where all the good coaches go to. He'd be smiling on that move because it was great. It is rare that you see both front rowers in support of each other. That was the case from Frank Wattenay with a super ball up to Morunga and Edwards showing all the standoffs where they should be on the fringe. Just backing up, that's the idea of a standoff. Back up all day. Tomahu higher. Just to grab the extra two. And they really have put out the challenge in the Oceania to the New Zealand 13. Well, Graham, you never had the opportunity to meet 6 mil there. You never had the opportunity to meet Tommy Newton, the great Maori coach for New Zealand Rugby League. He had a saying, running, running, running. That was the main term he used, and his players used to respond accordingly. He'd be real impressed with what he's seen with that try. More to come, say the fans here at Carlaw. So the dead set underdogs are well and truly that now. To come from behind. A forward. Good defence. Probably Aaron Whitaker needs to take control for the New Zealand 13. And start getting the ball spread just a little. And, uh, try and hit the fringes a little more. Get this fella here injecting onto those fringe areas. With his pace, if he makes a break, it shut the gate. Williams. Susu. Bit of a handful for two and three defenders. Ben Fay spins in the tackle, gets away from two defenders and sends it over the 50. On the last, Whitaker with the kick, thinks about shifting and so they should with numbers out wide. Doreen looks inside for Stellati and he tried to keep it alive for Brad Williams but gave a good ball up instead to Neville Ramsey. Yeah, well, it fell down in the end, but good enterprising play from New Zealand 13. I thought it looked very good, and the opportunity was there. It was just good defence in the end that, that uh, stopped it. little held-up pass here by Mike Loreen. Oh. This ball popped up here, but straight to Neville Ramsey. Mike Luke. Oh! Now the New Zealand 13 have enjoyed the majority of possession. New Zealand Maori with that first try. And the first real side to settle down. Tamahu Haya thinks about sending it to a comfortable advantage. Not a bad thought in a final to really make them think about it early. 7 0 New Zealand Maori. Well, this was intelligent play here, really intelligent by the young fullback. Knows now that New Zealand 13 need to score twice. Took his time, was confident with what he was doing. All his players around him knew what was going to happen. Clean as a whistle. It was a great field goal. And Tomahu Haya restarts us after posting his 45th point in this Oceania Challenge. And in a final, Lowy, that's good thinking. Well, I was very impressed with what he did then because Whoa, he was calm. And really, it's intelligent play. This early in the game, you don't normally see players going for field goals, trying to get that little bit of an advantage, but I think it was intelligent and good to see. Hold two, hands off! So Gary Campbell's side to dig pretty deep. Oh, leave him! 
Nuval trying to get it back up to the 50. Hanare will do that and stand, push it back to Matty Nuval. Ball, let him up, hands off! <laughs> Little fumble in there was there from Aaron Whitaker. Instead, he's got a penalty. Okay. Again, for men holding the men down, playing the ball. Well, really, this is a timely penalty here for the New Zealand 13. They need this, really. Murray's been getting on top, just holding down too long here. Should have got straight off. Get up and mark him. You know what the rules are. There was a fumble in there, so he was saved in the end. Well, actually, he didn't play the ball properly anyway, I don't think. Take a pick. <laughs> a forward. Heads it towards the post. Right in front of the post, in fact, 10 metres out. And that was just about line ball. Darren Avery out there quickly from the bench. Jerry Susu with a switch for Whitaker. Williams. Ocasini into a gap back for Williams. I think he wanted Doreen to stay outside him and with numbers. Ocasini from dummy half. Avery a second touch. Get away. Still just a couple of metres away. They were put to the test. They needed the reply. And they've just about got it. Medi Nouvelle, but they're sent down to the last get tackle. Get hands off. Defensive line holds. Williams. So under pressure, that's a great passage for New Zealand oh, Maori. Zero. It was, but there were some dangerous signs with the defence because they weren't going low enough. They were going too high, being brushed off tackles. A far in particular, he's proving a handful out there for the Marys because they are going too high on them and he's just brushing them off. Some punishing defence right on the 20. Need to set themselves. Come Get me, away, a good me. kick. Excellent running from Ray Butchard. Possession of 58% for New Zealand 13. And they maintain the territory as well, but scoreboards against them. Ramsey. Chance with numbers out here. That is still alive yeah, if they can get to it. Held one. But tied it up by Ocasini. Yeah, well, great work from Ocho Ocasini. Come across and cover defence. He might have number 10 on his back, but he can run around like a three-quarter or a back row. It was great work hey. from Ocasini. Richard Stewart. Hey. Stellati. Been enjoying a bit of time up in the top grade with the Warriors and has played well. Williams, Whitaker. All standing flat. No one really coming onto that ball. Well, that's the problem. They're standing and passing and no one's bothering the defence in any way because they're not taking a defender out. They're just passing the ball from one side to the other. Whitaker. No, play on. Had the call. Wasn't concerned that Whittaker was put down. Ohio. That's zero. Thought about a dummy. Maybe he should have unloaded. Hodge. Hell one. Here it is. George Milner. So both coaches Hell, making up. sure that bench is pretty busy. Ramsey. Kennedy. Across the paddock. Play up. Get on there. Threatened a couple Three. of times since that opening try. And he's very light on his feet, Kennedy. Well balanced runner. Not such a good kick from Mike Luke. And Stilati was easily allowed to bring it back past the 30. Susu. Williams. That's one. Hands off. Swarming sort of defence. They really are showing plenty of keenness. Avery. Hold two. Come to me. Barlow involved in the tackle with Shane Edwards, the try scorer. Hanari getting wide. He can live out there in the centres quicker than most of them. Afoa. Strongly in behind the line. Needs a quick play of the ball after all of this. But they slow him down. All on. This ball gets away from Kennedy. Did he touch it? He just looked up quickly at the touch judge, but it will be a New Zealand Maori feed. Well, 
players feeling the pinch out there a little bit at the moment, Graham. I think, you know, the the week of the tournament must be starting to take its toll. They're sucking him in hard, getting as much oxygen in as possible. But it's been a big ask for the players, and this game has started very, very vigorously. A lot of hard tackling, a lot of hard running. I think they're welcoming, welcoming this little break. 20 gone. Ohio. Hold one. Have a look. Have a look. Daryl Beasley out there off the bench as well. Clark. Oh, leave him. Barlow. Impressive in this challenge. Oh, come to me, Beasley's come another to me. player coming on here that can really make his presence felt because he's an intelligent player, good runner, good ball distributor. He can steer the team around the park well. So the New Zealand 13 will have to mark him carefully. They get this set of six right. They were under a bit of pressure inside their oh, own 20. Final. And on the final tackle, they've already crossed the 50. Oh. Midfield bomb for Glenn Coughlin to handle the heat. <laughs> Nearly taken by Kennedy. We'll take it, no advantage. Lost too much ground, lost forward, handover. Yep, yep, handover ready. for the New Zealand 13. I'm not sure whether Kennedy really backed himself in the first instance. And then ended up with a real chance oh. at it. Short ball play amongst oh. the forwards. Nivau. Fly out, let him go. Sets of six getting away from the New Zealand Maori, but so far the New Zealand 13 not doing much with it. Half chance for Doreen, oh. snapped quickly by Neville Ramsey. And he's looking threatening out there on the left-hand side. They'll probably try and provide him a few more opportunities. Some clear space. Williams. Allowed to step and stand back for a fella who has been getting good balls away for support. Doreen. Final. Get off, get off them. 20 Last tackle. Sean Hoppy. Sideline. Interested observer here as it goes to the in goal. Kennedy trying to find a bit of space. Still on his feet. Finished off by Williams. They will get it back and even more possession. 13, come here. Yeah, good defence here 13, from the New Zealand 13. Good little kick into the end goal and really have the opportunity now to get the ball back and try and mount some sort of attack. You not skip, okay? You and I are going to have problems if we continue to check. Warning here from Jim Stokes. Sort it out and we won't have any problems, okay? Right. Just mentions to Matty Nouveau just to leave the running of the game to him. Whitaker with that good kick to the end goal. Hoppy himself would have had trouble in getting out of that one. Left alone. Hoppy's only got one problem at the moment. That's with linesman. <laughs> that's one. Hands away. 35 away. Another look at that kick to the in goal. Oh! Whitaker was put down. Stokes had his eye on it. Allowed play to continue. Thought the penalty might have come. A forward. Still strongly oh! and just 12 metres away. Short side. Hanare. Get off, Took get some off, stuffing, off. only a couple of metres in it. Williams, Whittaker. Whittaker puts the foot down, will look out wide through the arms of Stewart. Lost forward, lost forward, scrum it here. It was hard luck there for Aaron Whittaker. Does everything Green right, Aaron Whitaker, when he runs with the ball. He always carries it out in front of him when he's going to do something. Switches the ball. Tried to do a basketball pass over the top. It didn't come off. But he did enough good work to try and set up the try. A couple of half chances gone missing for the New Zealand 13. I think the Mary are very, very guilty at the moment of going too high continually on Fosu Afar. And he is going to set up something soon that's going to punish the Marys more than what they would like. They've got to tackle him around the legs. Hold up, hold up. Green ball. Just managed to grab that back in, Shane Edwards. But they've been camped here for a couple of minutes now. Got to get out of here without making a mistake. Ramsey. Three. Just edging past the 20. The territory is really a big advantage for the New Zealand 13. Hold! Hands off them! Four. Milner. That's final! So still short of the 40 and looking for the kick. 
Well, on. Coughlin on the run puts it down. So they were banking on a mistake down the other end. Coughlin coughs up a pretty simple knock on. He Don't know that he can argue with anybody over this one. Well, he coughed up his dummy as well after the referee blew his whistle. It was just a regulation fumble. What's your name, mate? He was pretty disappointed in the call. The Jim Stokes was correct. Come forward, please. Mitzi. M. So New Zealand Maori handled all the heat. Try and get it right. And now they have a great chance to grab a second try. Down you go. Stick it on half. Stick it on. This is where Beasley's very dangerous. Along with Clark, goes back outside trying to get a bit of a head start against Mike Doreen. Clark. Tomahu Haina may even think about grabbing another one pointer. They'll get a chance at two. Jerry Susu underneath all of that saying that he was the one on the bottom. Judge for yourself whether this penalty should have come. Well, I think it was great work from Clark. He could have stepped backwards, but no, no. He did the right thing and tried to get a penalty out of it. I think it's a pretty harsh penalty on New Zealand 13. But he got what he was trying to get any rate. He did climb back on board and tried to milk it, and in the end he got it. So Tama Hohaya, who has been kicking pretty well throughout the whole challenge, Looking for 47 points, 100% today. And possibly even more problems for this New Zealand 13. Betting favourites, the New Zealand 13, but crowd favourites without a doubt, New Zealand Maori. You'll know about it if the kick's successful. So they stretch it by a couple more. And in a final, this is a handy lead at 9-0. It certainly is a handy neat lead, and really, New Zealand 13 have to come up with, a, with some sort of reply on the board very, very quickly because, I mean, these guys are going at halftime really pumped up, and it's going to be hard for the New Zealand team to, to come back in that second half if they can't get any points before halftime here. Getting down towards the last oh, five. Here it is. Still think they're guilty of not getting the ball wide enough. They're playing it too tight. Some good short passing going on, but they're not really Two, threatening the outside defence of the Maori. Strong defence, and the penalty will come. So both sides guilty of really dominating in that play of the ball area and trying to slow things down. Plenty of players having something to say to the referee. Well, Cameron Bell wouldn't be too impressed with his players over this. Silly penalty to give away there, but compounded by mouthing off at the referee and being marched further down the park. The start of a set of six, all of a sudden, they're down outside the 20. Whittaker. Just seems that Whittaker and Williams aren't having too much success, both seemingly standing too flat. Ramsey didn't see what happened. An incident off the ball. Jim Stokes might have to call a halt to proceedings. On, fellas, too close it was, it was on the fi first Hold play. He just rushed, rushed up very quickly at Whitaker. Might have just caught a finger or an elbow or something, just an accident on the way through. Plenty of concern for Neville Ramsey. He seems to be OK. Now he fended him off. Just wonder if he might have copped a finger in the eye. Yeah, he probably just copped something like that because Neville Ramsey doesn't go down. It takes an elephant gun to put him down. Up here, up here. And, um, up here. Just wait till he's replaced, OK? Tough little player. He's going to go off the field now for a bit of a rest. Get wound up again and he'll be back out. Hold up. Mike Luke gets back out there off the bench for him. 
Okay, that's tackle two. But he is an important player out of this area. One of the best defenders, gone missing for a couple of moments. That's three, let him go! Hands off! Very important that they hang on without him. Change of angle. Famuina just to play it right on the 20 now. Whitaker, wide. Better as they come from the deep. Jerry Susu. Susu stepping his way out of tackles. He might end up dragging three or four across with him. Nivao. Occasini goes inside. Gets wrapped up. Slips a great ball away. Famuina kicking out wide. Stellati's there with Coglin. And it's given up to Charlie Kennedy. So they cannot do anything right at the moment. Well, they are being forced now slowly into having to play, ca play catch-up footy. And when you do that, you do come up with the odd error. Coglin strongly into the tackle. Bit of a facial for Mike Luke. Beasley. Showed the ball. Got punished for it by Hanare and Okasini. Ricky Henry. They've really soaked up some pressure at their own end. Done it well, New Zealand Marrick. Ohio just chipping into some space for Hodge. And taken well by Darren Avery. I thought there was a hint there that he lost the ball. Touch judge was trying to get the attention of Jim Stokes. Famoina. See, we can see the differences between the two sides' attack. Murray, when they receive the ball in a turnover, are prepared straight away to open it up, as opposed to the New Zealand 13, who are probably wasting two or three tackles down the middle to start. And it's just not coming off for them. I'm sure Gary Kimball will address that at half time. Get out of it. New Zealand Murray defence down the centre has been very strong. Hold up. Come here. Aaron. Now, Clark. Who's the scuffer then? Come here. And also, Mike Luke were having plenty to say. Skip up. Dean, I told you. Now, they was that, arguing eh? about a forearm. Listen, guys, come here. Aaron's gone off. You're now skipper, OK? You're skipper. Control your players. I've had enough of too much yakking, OK? Any more yakking, there's going to be penalties. I don't want to do it. You open your mouth. That's it. You guys sort it out. Well, he's got to put his stamp on it. After this caution to both captains, now, he was arguing about the forearm into the throat from Ocasini. But, Lowy, he's, he's made the call here now on both captains, so instead of just keeping on penalising, somebody's got to go. Yeah, well, somebody put, put in the sin, but I actually didn't think that there was much wrong with that, that particular forearm there. I think Hytro tried to fend him to start. Yep. His right. hand brushed off and ended up on his forearm. Farmoina. One, get away! Hands off! Couple of penalties and plenty of possession. Avery. And New Zealand Maori to hang on again. It's been a high-scoring Oceania challenge, but we've got a pretty tight final at the moment. Beasley flew against Hanare, and I don't know that there was much in the tackle. Come here. Come here. Come here. Now, there's a danger here for Jim Stokes to let this slip. And I do think that Beasley's got a good argument here to ask what for. I must admit that I didn't think that was all that high or dangerous. I just thought it was great ball and all stuff. Doreen. So again, they have to hang on. One, get off him, get off! Two, get away, hands off, hands off! They spread wide, they go from one side to the other. Mark Famuina right in oh, front of the let post. Him go, let him go! Matty Nouveau on the inside. Ocasini took the brunt of it all and still got a ball back. Let him go! They try to push it into the end goal. Well, you've got to salute that Mara defence. That was outstanding. They're under all sorts of pressure there, but they've handled the challenge. They've done it each time. Barlow. Really, that's great work from the Mary defence, I thought. Got to get themselves spread a little here. They're bunched. Help! Interesting that Denver Johnston is out there. Wasn't even listed in the squad lineup for the final. 
Mike Luke. Final! Johnson out there in number nine. Yeah, I got him, I got him. All on! Tomaho higher. Down for Richard Stewart. So 13, New Zealand 13, and that is against 12. 12, blood boot. Now they have Mike Luke headed for the blood bin. So a lot of disruptions to this side. They're going to do well to hang on here just before half time. Yes, yeah, certainly the Mara, Mara defence has been under a lot of pressure. New Zealand starting to mount their attacks more efficiently now. Um, I think both sides are looking for the break yep. at half time. A couple of oranges, a bit of a chat from the coach. Hold one! Good strong defence from Mike Luke, but he's headed for the blood men. Thought he had been pinched for a tackle himself. Still a little bit of time. Seconds only, though. Williams. Fire! They might get a Hands couple of play the balls in before the break. Occasini. Whitaker has gone to the bench. Occasini taking over. They have to kick. And this one comes up for Hohaya. Who goes to the outside and sneaks away for Hodge. And Hodge for Ramsey who's back out there can he get rid of it they do wide it is and Blair Harding tried to finish off and it gets away they're still keen for some points down the other end rather frantic and a little bit fiery right here at the break but at the moment it's the New Zealand 13 down and out Looking to try and climb back into this final. New Zealand Maori doing it well. Oceania challenged the final of 97, 9-0. We're back at Carlow after this. Boy, it's a terrible style of play where you're going both blue games lose $20. 10 seconds. <laughs> Just come on, Peter. You are just. <laughs> Carl or Park at half time in the main game in the Oceania tournament to decide who will be the pride of the Pacific between the New Zealand 13 and the New Zealand Maoris. As the New Zealand Maori up 9 0, one try, a drop goal, and also a penalty to the New Zealand Maori. And Hugh McGann, one would suggest, and I know you're not going to like me for this, that the New Zealand 13 are just not playing good football at the moment. No, they're not, but they're, they're grinding away what they're supposed to be doing. They're going through their structure. They're just dropping the ball at uh, crucial times, but there's also been some strong defence by the Maori in, uh, in everything they're doing. They're really hitting hard. Pete, the one thing I've noticed about the New Zealand 13 inside the red zone, they still struggle to know where to go. Well, so, so much of the play is too predictable. You know, rather than maybe looking for some variations, getting the bigger man running too wide of the ruck, they're persisting with just taking it one off, one off, and sometimes maybe trying to be too smart rather than simple plays. A real blow to the New Zealand 13. They have lost Aaron and Whitaker for the remainder of the game. It was suspected that it was going to be a concussion here. And uh, well, he got a push in the back and just uh, met another one of his players. So, Hugh, that is a, well, that, well, how much of a blow will that be for the 13? I think it'll be a big blow because he's been the catalyst of everything that they've been doing throughout the whole week. And just looking at that uh, monitor there, it looks as though he may have done something to his neck at the same time. So I'm not surprised that he may not be back, but it'll be a crucial blow to the New Zealand 13. Yeah, Richard Stewart for the New Zealand 13 also got a, a crack to the ribs, but uh, it wasn't a crack. It was just a little bit of a bruise. And he will return in the second 35. One try Pete and that was uh, a very well constructed try by New Zealand Māori. Oh, it was a great move and again coming off the likes of Neville Ramsey just skirting across the, the face of the ruck and what was interesting here was the involvement of the two prop forwards Watani first and then Moranga in support to find Edwards to finish it off. Some great support play and a good finish to a good move. Who has impressed you in the first half for New Zealand Māori first of all Hugh? Well, no one in particular, but I think it's been more of a, uh, the team aspect of the way they've played. I think they were running off the emotion at the start of the game and then they finished real strong. So I think it's more of a team effort that I'll be more impressed with. Pete, I know Hughes going to, has suggested to me while we are watching the match that it'll be a completely different New Zealand 13 side in the second half as they've displayed in the first three days. Well, the fact that they've lost Aaron Whitaker is, is certainly going to determine that fact. We saw on Thursday night when he left the field that uh, they fell apart and lost that direction and uh, someone really, and maybe uh, Williams, I think, you may have to step up and assume that role of pushing them around the football field and trying to play some smart footy. They've had their opportunities, 
but uh, just not taking the right options. It's the New Zealand Māori leading the New Zealand 13 in the main game at Carlow Park on the final day of the Oceania tournament to find out who will be the pride of the Pacific. Nine points to nil. Just a reminder, if you were expecting the Russ Abbott show following this, it will now be replayed at a later date so we can bring you all the best from Carlow Park on day number four of the Oceania tournament. We're back with the second 35 next. Sunday in Auckland City started out wonderfully fine and warm, but the temperatures have dropped and the, dropped and the cloud has come over. We've uh, faced the first 35 in the final of the Oceania tournament live on Orange here at Kalor Park. And at the moment, New Zealand Māori lead nine points to nil over the New Zealand 13 as students from Hatopatara College provide some half-time entertainment. And they are really almost like New Zealand Māori's cheerleader squad as well because as soon as they come close to the try line, uh, their chant goes up. And it does provide a wonderful Pacific Island flavour to this tournament which we've experienced over the past four days and a good crowd in as well to experience this final. 9-0 New Zealand Māori lead New Zealand 13 back to the G-man Graham Lowe and Graham Hughes. Thank you Stephen. Terrific first 35 from the New Zealand Māori who enjoy all the support here at Carlaw. Yeah well, they're entertaining the crowd as well they're playing a great brand of footy I think out there and they've got the ball, they're showing the flair and attack that we know they're capable of, but also plenty of sting in the defence. Now the news is not good to the New Zealand 13. No Aaron Whittaker, and they went into the final without Shane Endicott out with a knee injury. So they're looking down the barrel in this second 35. A tough way home for them. Yeah, certainly plenty of pressure on them, but there's still plenty of class out there. I think that if they just play the right type of footy, they can get on the edge of this Maori side. I think they're making it a little too easy for the Maori defence, particularly down the middle. You've got to score a couple of times. New Zealand 13. Neville Ramsey was injured at one stage, went to the bench. He got back out there in a hurry. And there's a message that in there for somebody, though, eh? Well, the message for Aaron, he's obviously got a knock on the jaw there. Well, the only message for Aaron is an SOS from his team. They need him. It's a shame to be injured in this, or injured at any time, but particularly in this final, because he's played such a major role for the New Zealand 13 side. Still one man down for a couple of more minutes. Beasley sent to the bin just before half time. So it's an important time for New Zealand Maori to handle. Especially if they can get the ball down the other end. That's one! Hands up! Let him up! Strong running will send them out to the 30. Moranga followed by Hell, Frank Watney, the Hands two who up. got together to set up that try for Shane Edwards. Ramsey. Ball just popped up on the inside Hell, for Casino Doyle. Off, Gets his first touch in this final. Edwards. Away from Agassini. He's got Clark coming up in support. Gets away from everyone. Back for Barlow. That's final. Bit of a Hands chance off. gone begging. Just didn't find anybody. Now Kennedy to put up a midfield bomb, do his own chasing. Tries to set himself to climb, but there was support in there from Stellati. Play on. For Coglin. No, he's held. That's zero. Hands off. Pretty confident player, this Coglin. Strong. Not scared to attack the ball. One. Hands off. Sets of six starting to even up, but for the New Zealand Maori, a lot of those have been at their own end. Hold. Hands off. The attacking advantage resting with the New Zealand 13. Cassini looks for Hanare. They will have to look for him a lot in this second half. Matty Nivau, Doreen, Stellati, just a little bit of space. Back on the inside, Nivau will kick for himself as well over the head of Tamahohaya, who needs to hurry. Hold up. So they're going to maintain the heat. They're going to get some more ball back. Good skills. It was good skills. Good left-footed kick there. 
a good chase and really a good look about the New Zealand 13 in the opening minutes of the second half. This is the sort of thing they need. Let's go, Greg. Quite basically, both sides know that the New Zealand 13 need to be the next scorers. Famuina will wind up and finish off just outside the 20. But there's no end to cut, no Whittaker. Interesting to see who takes over here. Avery inside the 20. Ocasini leading the charge. Quick hands for Williams. Line three! Sanders, Sanders! So a little bit one out. They haven't really shifted the ball. This time they try to use it. Susu will stand, but finished off over the top. Good defence from Barlow. Back they go to the other side. Williams trying to catch a short defensive line. They put it down. Well, I was sure there was a knock on in there. Everybody's looking around. He's going to go and check with the touch judge. New Zealand Maoris went over and questioned it. Touch judge has nodded his head to Jim Stokes. Well, they still want to argue the situation with the touch judge, but New Zealand 13 are the next scorers at 9-4. Yes, it was probably debatable on whether or not this was a knock-on. Certainly the two officials felt it wasn't. Well, I'd say you could have 50... That's a 50-50 call. If it was Australia versus New Zealand, it would have gone Australia's way. <laughs> well, there was a, quite a few players that just stood and looked around back on the inside of all this, thinking that the whistle was going to go. You've got to play to it. Bit of fumble and a bit of a stumble for all involved, but they come up with it through Avery. Well, that's what New Zealand 13 needed. They had to get those points on the board quickly, and they came up with it. They have had a good look about them in these opening minutes, as I said previously. Not a more timely try. Still can't bring a smile to Aaron Whittaker's face. Crowd a little bit quiet after all of that. Coglin from wide out. Hits it pretty well. It will not come around, though. So that field goal still important at the moment. 9-4 in the final of the Oceania Challenge. Well, I think in fairness to the New Zealand 13, that's probably the first time the ball has bounced their way. A little bit of luck gone their way. So uh, maybe fortunes will change for them. inside their own 20. They've had to work it out tough from this area for a big part of this game. What name? Hold! Hands off! Here it is, Darren, you're off. 56% for the New Zealand 13. They just really haven't enjoyed a lot of chances down the other end, and they're doing well on the scoreboard at 9-4. New Zealand Maori. I think both dummy halves from both teams are going to have to take control. Oh, great defence. They have to take control of their sides here and really direct their fortunes. And um, just those two players alone, I think, can change the whole complexion of the game. It's almost like they're trying to wear them down, the New Zealand 13. Ricky Henry and Joe Hodge. Oh, that's two. Terrific combination. Ocasini. Still travelling and just outside the 20. So back they come again. Wave after wave now. Stellati. Stellati. Held by Kennedy. Finally gets called to play it. Hanare. Changing the angle and right in front of the post on the last. Get out of there! No! Nouvelle starting to take over amongst the rucks. He puts up another one right near the post. Who wants it? Comes away. Still might be six more. Wasn't knocked on. And Tukari Barlow will come up with a good surge out towards his own 20. It was a good surge from Barlow. He's another player who's had a good tournament. Really that bit of luck, I think, really definitely going the Maori way, so it's deserted New Zealand 13 already. Ohio up in the line. 
But Graham, I mentioned the, the dummy half roll before. Howie Tarmody that used to play for the Kiwis from Taranaki. That's where he was so effective because he can, could, could control the game from dummy half and really it's a skill that a lot of the blokes don't seem to have. So Mike Luke. <laughs> Does a little bit of a tease here for the fans. Well, now did Ocasini call for that on a short side? No, says Jim Stokes. So a turnaround of possession coming up here as Luke goes back to full uniform. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, well, they probably just ripped it off and put it in the washing machine for a you while. <laughs> Thought he was a bit of a dirty player, I suppose. Didn't bother him. He just put his head down and Hold kept up, burrowing Blake, away. Blake, Blake. Wait. Quite a good head Wait. to burrow with also by the look of it. Wait to the form. Takes your haircut another step, Walk doesn't it? <laughs> Brad Williams with the feed now. But they can ill afford to keep on handing this possession back. It will cost them the final. Hanare. Yet to really explode in this final. Well, I think he burst on the ball once and Beasley stopped him in his tracks. It's the first player I've seen do that to him in the tournament. And Beasley is back, so they're back at full strength, 13. So that's Sinbin, which was a questionable one just before the break, did cost them. Some cool heads are needed in the Mary side out there now just to keep things in control. They've got the game in their grasp. They've got to be positive with everything they do. Don't give silly penalties away. Try and get some more field position, position because they have actually been winning the game from their own end of the park, which is a difficult hands thing off, to do. Off, it's a hard way to win off. a game of footy. Tom Wiener has run strongly since he's come on. Leah Harding looking for Doreen. Beasley with another tackle. Susu. Susu really busts them open and takes them just five metres away. Johnson screaming for it at dummy half. Avery alive for Williams. Really are stretched New Zealand Maori coming up with a lot of tackles. They're starting to tire. Nivau. Okasini. Last line of defence just grabbed him, and last tackle now. Farmawena to the end goal, far too strong. Looked as though he might have been better off shifting. They seem to have men over on that side. Yeah, they did have, have the overlap, but once again, the Mary defence has been outstanding. They've been under all sorts of pressure, but they're scrambling so well on their goal line. It's fantastic, but definitely the wrong option there because there was a definite chance out on that flank. From a tap restart, they pick up 18 metres. And even more just out of dummy half for Joe Hodge. Ramsey tries to put a step on Okasini, does not get away from him. That's what it's all about. At the moment, New Zealand Maori maybe with one hand on it. That'll be zero when he's caught. Miss tackles against them. Hey, watch the swing and arm, watch the swing and arm. Williams. Sitting it up for Ben Fay. One. Good run from him. Avery. Been heavily involved Hold for a man two. who started from the bench also in this final. Yeah, well, the Mary Marker defence now is just not operating at all. They're just watching the runners run past them. It's a dangerous sign for them. That's better defence. I really can't remember the last time they were down inside the 20 of the New Zealand 13. Four dominated for the last 15 minutes or so before oh. half time and it has been all at this end since the break Ocasini somehow managed to push that back for Williams Coglin he'll not have a chance and it'll go down to the last tackle really spreading away on that territorial advantage don't need to play out at New Zealand Maori, but they do have to take Fay, who was tackled and finished off. Green ball. So they will have to work it away again, some more hard work. The thing is, the Maori can't keep withstanding that much pressure on their own goal line, but what a fantastic run we've got here. Joe Hodge, knowing that his forwards are tied, comes off his wing. Likewise oh. now for Ricky Henry from the centres. And his forwards are very, very tied. They're all bunched in there at the moment, but this is what's required. Just a bit of zipping out of dummy half. 
get a little bit of a roll on, then open it up while New Zealand's on the back foot. Well, while well, the 13's on the back foot. Didn't look as though there was a big advantage in that set of six, but those seven sets for the New Zealand Maori, nearly all of them having to become from their own 20. Beasley with a high tackle. And no one's going to argue with this one. Go away. Go away. In fact, he looks as though he might have cut Coglin open. Yeah, Coglin stepping back in there. No doubt whatsoever, Beasley clipped him straight across the, the dial. Well, most definitely that is one that must go on report. Surely. Now, Jim Stokes has asked him to stay. Listen, second time, mate, OK? You're off. There They're you down go. to 12 off. for the rest Bring of the final. Here potentially, OK? Where you go. It was intentional, it's the off. So New Zealand Maori will have to play the remainder with just 12 men. It is real hard for them now. I don't know that anybody's realised here that he's out of here. A sensation in the final. Can't be any argue about it. Full swinging arm flush. And on this occasion, I can't argue with Jim Stokes. No, Beasley's let himself and his teammates down there because that was a silly thing to do at this stage of the game. Or at any time, really. You heard him mention that it was his second warning, so in fact, that was the one just before half time that he was in the bin for, which well, I don't think well, I don't he think deserved. It, I don't think there was anything wrong with the first one, to tell the truth. It was just a good ball and all tackle. And a concern for Coglin, who will need a couple of stitches. So you would think now, with plenty of time up their sleeve and the way they have controlled it since half-time, getting back into this one, how hard it's going to be now for New Zealand Maori to hang on. Roll away, see Lloyd Drake off, walking down off. the sideline there. To Coglin, another man who's given his life to rugby league here. Oh, Cassini breaks away. Caught from behind by Mike Luke. This is where New Zealand Maori must keep their cool. Got to work overtime, just 12 of them. Nouveau has had a strong final. Help! Hands off! Let him up! Johnson to dummy half. Nowhere to go but straight ahead. Spins in the tackle. Would play it right on the 10. Hands off! Williams. Change of angle for Susu and Avery to link final. up. Final! Let him go! Let him go! One more tackle if they can spread wide. They'll go to the wing through a bomb. Kennedy will have to handle it, and he does. Now, he was already dead in goal, said Jim Stokes. Not taken from the field of play, so they come up with some possession. Well, they've got to make good use of it here. They've got to get themselves out of this half of the park, down the other end of the paddock. That's where they've got to play the game, because they're one man short. Possession there well in favour of the New Zealand 13. They are one man short and they just cannot afford to play at their own end of the park. Also a problem in tight pressure games like finals, Lowe, you're down to 12 men, you know your backs are against the wall, you start to run one out a bit and get away from your own game. The yeah, Lamarick's game is flair, backing one another up, standing in tackles, offloading, the support play, that's their go. And that's what they've got to keep doing, even though they are down to 12. If they go into the power game, they'll lose. Edwards. Running it out towards the sideline, kicking ahead over there. Did he run into touch or did he kick it? Sorry? He kicked it out, okay. Scrum it in 20. It's been a pretty interesting game, I think, this Graham, he because there's a lot of little tussles in it. And really, it's I mean, if you were just starting to look at the game in the second half, yeah. it's hard he to tell who's out, actually okay. leading. Well, you definitely think that New They're Zealand was mark. winning the game just with the field position and possession Stay that here, they had. Stay up! Stay up! Walker. Well, they've got 20 minutes or thereabouts to do something about the New Zealand 13. It will be 12 rather tired New Zealand Maori players to try and hang on. 9-4. Tama Hohaya's field goal certainly looking very, very important now. Well, no Whitaker with the kicking duties out there, and Coglin, who took over from him, he's off. So they'll have to go to a third stringer. I'd say Coglin will be back on soon. Dr. Lloyd Drake will have him fixed up oh, in no time. A follow. 
One more tackle outside the 20. And we've got a touch judge in. So if there's another penalty to go against New Zealand Maori here. 17 green. It's a big problem because it was down to the last tackle. They should not have made a mistake at the end of the set of six. 17 green. 17. 17 Frank Watney will be called over. The thrower was asked to come over as well. Got you for punching the tackle player, okay? Listen, hey, hey. Get back, get back, get back. So here's a big call. Do they try and go for two points to set up the winning situation with a try after this, or do they go for the try straight away? Well, if I was him, I'd go for the two. On the cross. Yep. Still plenty of time on the clock. They've, got, they've gone for four or six. They've taken the gamble. Well, they back themselves. That's good. A thrower. Head down. A thrower will just crash over. Now, that's going to come about from mistakes being made by New Zealand Maori. They really did punish themselves. And they just cannot afford to be forced to keep on coming up in defence. Well, I couldn't be more pleased for a player to get a try in this tournament, particularly in the final. And for, for Usu Afar, really, really worked hard. He's busted the line time and time again. This time he got the points. You said it in the first half. Everybody was going high on him. That's where they stayed. Nobody wanted to go for the legs. When they did, it was too late. He's a good player, a real good player. And you've got to congratulate them for taking the onus on going for the points. I certainly would have gone for the goal with this much time left, but they were confident. They felt they had the marry on the rack. So they just served it up to them. Dean Clark, what's he saying to them in the end goal? Well, he's just saying, get back to what we were doing before. Remember, running, running, running. Our support game. Never mind trying to take these blokes on and give away silly penalties. We're not going to win. Daryl Beasley sent off that sends the New Zealand Maori down to just 12 men. Afoa picks up his second try of the challenge. Also had, having a good career with Penrith. Matty Nuvao, who's had a strong final. Started to take a little bit of control around the rucks and strikes this one pretty well. Just wide. I also noticed out there while the Maori were having their little talk, Graham, Trevor Clark. Looks to be their runner. Another very experienced player. Played a lot in the UK. He'll be certainly passing any messages out from Endicott. One point in it. They still hang on to the lead. Sorry, I don't mean from Endicott, from uh, Cameron Bell. <laughs> okay. Ben Fay with this restart. Clark especially, along with Tukari Barlow, players who can control this ruck situation, have really got to put their hands up now. They can't afford, as much as they're down just to 12 men. Now, Mike Luke, I think, tried to milk it. He climbed over the tackle. And I don't know whether he just let that one go himself or whether there was a hand in there. Or is it Clark? Hold up. Why you down. The thing about it is, is they're letting the referee and the situation of the final get to them. Well, they're letting themselves Martin, down. Let That's what up. they are doing. Got to keep to the bright, positive play that they're capable of. Back for Williams. Oh! Johnson. A thrower. Got oh! them to try to put them within one point. Already up past the century, the tackle count for New Zealand Maori. And more still to come. Okasini, Susu. Ball out for Jason Kerriper. He couldn't get to it. Williams does, though. And That's he's cool. taken ball and all by Dean Clark. Stellati. Taken just a couple of metres away on the last tackle. Johnson. Bombing wide against Hodge. Fay's getting there. It comes away. They might have got another one. Lost forward. Now they've said that the New Zealand 13 lost it. Interesting to see whether it was Charlie Kennedy, in fact, who might have lost it, or Joe Hodge. He's in trouble in the end goal. And for the moment, they're down to 
11 men, it might be 10, was Shane Edwards in trouble as well. well See it for yourself. A fine kick. It did come off the hand, second time round, and the backhand. I think of Ben Fay. Ramsey. So they've got problems everywhere. Well, they've really got to dig deep now, call on all reserves. But that's the sort of run they need, an inspiring run. That was fantastic. Much better now as they take it up through Morunga. Doyle, oh, thrown to ground by Jason Kerapa. Kennedy. Well, oh. Tamahohaya, who puts up a midfield bomb. Stellati leaves it alone. And Faye will bring it back on his own 20. Long, long time since these guys have been back here. Well, it's very, very important that the Maori try and force an error here, try and jot the ball loose somehow and get some sort of turnover because they've got oh, to keep whoa. playing the game down this end. Position's not too important at the moment. Field position is. Well, they've got to use their heads, the 13, because there are only 11 in the line at the moment with men down everywhere for the Maori. One man sent off. 12 missed tackles against them. Okasini. Low scoring final so far as Okasini puts the foot down. Doreen gets away. Doreen still. Now finished off on the 30. Williams. Doreen, we've got a man down in the end goal with medical staff. And it's dangerously close to that situation. That ball was line ball. But they've got it. The medical staff is screaming at Jim Stokes to pull up the play. He's well out of play and he's been looked after. He surely must pull up play. But they kept it alive. Listen, Dean. Yeah, they certainly he did. Well the, I mean, it's just sheer weight of possession in the end. It's to, tell it's told, told it's tell, whatever you say. <laughs> Out here, this was a good ball up. It wasn't line ball, it was fair enough. But it could have been a dangerous situation there with everything except the operating table out there in the end goal area. Well, I know he's out of the play at the moment. But it's a player in big trouble. Great ball up from Avery, who's played well. Stellati. But certainly Shane Edwards also, um, not Shane Edwards, Brad Williams also. Now it's so serious that apparently he has lost some feeling in his fingers. Now, Lowy, this is a situation where we're going to have a restart down deep. Surely the referee's got to pull this up until this player is off the field. You've got no argument with me, I agree. The player's safety is far more important than anything else. Been a lot of arguing of the referee in this one, and that's not to support the players, but Jim Stokes has got to make sure that he doesn't let this game slip. Ben Fay sends it down the middle. So a converted try is now required from New Zealand Maori. Just the 12 of them against the New Zealand 13. 14-9 in the final. Now, this is a remarkable situation. I cannot believe we're going to have a restart of play. We've got stretches in the end goal. We've got ambulance men everywhere. And yet we're going to restart a final. What's he going to do? Kick Ask them to kick to the other side. He's asking them to kick it left. Can you believe this? Yep. He's asking players or telling players what to do in a game of football. That's a joke. He's not a coach. Now the trainers have gone up to ask him if they can pull up play. Now heaven's above. Heaven's above. Who's in control here? All right. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Now finally he knows that he has made a mistake. The clock will be stopped. Okay. Fair enough. Yep. Okay. Now let's huddle in over here. Okay. Now Dean, Dean Clark is looking daggers at the referee. Another look at the way he fell. And from that moment didn't move. 
No one come up and ask him to stop it. Okay, all right. But he's not involved with playing stop it now. Well, I can't agree with Jim Stokes, who said nobody asked him to stop it. I mean, it was there for him to see for the last 10 minutes. That's what the eyeballs are for. But anyhow, it has stopped now, and we can only hope that the injury uh, is not too bad. Still the medical staff who may not move him at all until we have an ambulance. So this final grinds to a halt with about nine or ten minutes remaining. And that possession, Lowy just climbed well away from the New Zealand Maori who have battled in this final from their own 20. Yeah, particularly in the second half, territory and possession really is told against them and also now playing with only 12 players. Handling errors have gone against the New Zealand 13, as you might expect with the heavy weight of possession their way. But the tackle counter heavy one against New Zealand Maori. And the sets of six in the double figures for the New Zealand 13, but that sets of six of nine for the New Zealand Maori. I would think only a couple of those sets being used on attack at the other end. Yeah, that's been the story of the game. So everybody still has to wait for this serious injury. I think to Joe Hodge down in the in goal. So still we wait. And a lot of things going on the minds of both sides, but at least it will give a spell to the New Zealand Maori who were pretty tired with all the defence that they had to make. Yeah, they've had to come up with a lot of defence, particularly of the scrambling type, on their own goal line. By and large, they've handled it pretty well, but in the end, possession just told. Well, it told in this one, where the ball was allowed to be kept alive. They had injuries, men injured in the last couple of moments, and they tried to shuffle some men from the bench out there. They were down to just 12 in their line, but it was good hands from Avery for Stellati. And I mean, at that instant, that is where Jim Stokes should have known to pull this final up. That's the reason why they're down to 12. Beasley was put in the bin for an earlier high shot. Second time round, he was out of there for splitting open Glenn Coughlin. So it's going to be a tough night for Daryl Beasley, knowing that he's left his team down to 12. Well, one thing, seeing Hodges' feet moving around, Kicking out slightly there does give you a little more comfort if you can get comfort out of an injured player on the ground. At least he's got the movement that we look for. Well, I think that's the right thing both sides have to do. Try and just keep warm. The players will be stiffening up standing out there. They've got to keep trying, keep, keep warm, keep moving. These players have been through a lot during this tournament. It's a tough ask for anybody. I think the New Zealand Maori team would probably be better off walking around as well. Big question mark about whether that one was a knock-on or not. But Avery, who had a hand in setting up that try for Stellati, backed up superbly, tidied all that up, brought it round to improve the situation, and he's had a fine final for somebody who was listed to start from the bench. Still we wait for this ambulance, which has just arrived out the back of Carlo Park. And Joe Hodge with the medical staff there. It's going to be tough for both sides to restart and get involved. At least some movement there in the legs of Joe Hodge.
we'll wait for the injured player to move from Carlo. New Zealand 13 still trying to do some skills and some ball work to stay warm stay loose otherwise you might have some problems with players cramping up you believe that's his wife down at the end goal with him been a couple of injuries here in the matches today yes, yeah, yeah, after a long hard week of football you know, having the likes of Dr. Lloyd Drake, Glenn Gallagher, physiotherapist on the spot, certainly eases that situation of injuries because both are very, very experienced. We'll take a break at Carlo and the final of the Oceania Challenge of 97. Be back after this. Welcome back to Carlos, still awaiting the ambulance here at the ground in this final, which has arrived at last and found its way onto the paddock. But as we're trying to still wait for the New Zealand Maori winger, Joe Hodge, to be taken from the field, let's take you through the week of the Oceania Challenge of 1997.
Plenty of play from four days of action at the 1997 Oceania Challenge here at Carlow Park. Live on Orange, the final at the moment as it stands, 14 points to nine. The New Zealand 13 have come from behind and they lead the New Zealand Māori. We're waiting on the removal of Joe Hodge from the field. The ambulance has arrived. Uh, no, not sure what his medical condition is, but there are some concerned faces about. We'll bring you up to date with that as soon as we know anything further. Well, Ro, let's just turn our attention back to the game for the moment. This New Zealand 13 with a sending, uh, New Zealand Māori with sending off Daryl Beasley. Uh, foolish foolish mistake and it's cost them well it's careless and you, you pay the price and uh, unfortunately I think it's allowed the New Zealand 13 to grow stronger as the game progresses you know they've had enjoyed a lot more of the territory they played mostly down in the New Zealand Maori half and they're getting stronger one of the things I suppose the New Zealand Maori should have been thinking rather than trying to defend their lead was to go on the attack but uh, you look at uh, maybe the style of the game that uh, New Zealand 13 brought back into the second half I think they've found a lot more fluency in their attacking game and uh, take nothing away from Aaron Whitaker on the first half, but I don't think it real, the mix was there with him and Williams. Williams has settled into the halfback position, and uh, Medi Nuraval moving to 5'8. They're getting that fluency. We've got Hytro Cassini running wider. Uh, we see the likes of Fasuo Fire still playing strong. Jerry Susu's moving a little bit wide. So they're taking it to them and making it a little bit more difficult for the Maori defence. If we were spotting stars of the future or just stars over this last four days, we've already talked about the young Mahanga from Hokianga. But this Ben Fahey from the New Zealand 13 side is a good, honest worker. Well, you, you see the versatility, and we've seen it with a number of players. Uh, PNG, we had Elias Payo play out in the centres today, playing in the, the number nine shirt in the previous games. Today, Ben Fahey starts in the second row, ends up on the flank. And uh, the guy's got a physical presence about him. And he's He's got the speed to match it up as well. It's always interesting when you look at players that are playing for the Warriors or whatever. They're always a class above the rest, aren't they? You look at Brian Hernada, you look at Bruce Mamundo, Elias Pio, Stan Tulavu. I mean, they really do show themselves up in a competition like this, don't they? Well, there's a sense of maturity where physically they look stronger, they're well conditioned, and uh, I think just with the training regime that they enjoy with the Auckland Warriors, they're just better prepared to play football, not only for 80 minutes, but four games over six days, yeah, they're certainly well above them. Well, Pete, we've had quite a, quite a break now waiting for young Hodge to be taken off the field. Uh, what are the players going to do through the, the routine now? What's going through their minds? Who's it going to be an advantage to? I don't know if it's going to advantage anyone. You know, you, you've got to break and play. It's about sort of being able to keep your mind focused and uh, we noticed when it first started that they're getting about trying to warm up, go through their warm-up drills and just stay warm. So, and that's crucial because it's very easy to come back into it. If you're a little cold, you can end up pulling an injury, a hamstring if you're still fortunate enough to have them in the back of your legs <laughs> but um, come back in and be able to pick it up it's very hard if you have a timeout and then come back and expect it to turn it on particularly when you've only got uh, 10 minutes left on the clock yeah I, I was just wondering now this this break may have been advantageous possibly to New Zealand Maori uh, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. It's, uh, they're going to have to come out and be expected to go from zero to 100 in 10 minutes. But so are the New Zealand 13, even though they're on the box seat. Well, they're defending a lead, and I think it's perhaps a little bit easier to defend rather than uh, get in there and try and attack, particularly from behind. 14 points to nine is the score at the moment, with 10 minutes still to go in this final of the 1997 Oceania Challenge. Uh, just a reminder that the New South Wales Queensland Tri-Series final is live on Sky Sport from 9.30 tomorrow night. Kick off at approximately 10 o'clock from ANZ Stadium in Brisbane. Our commentary team will be Graham Lowe and Graham Hughes. They're going to be getting out of here. Quick, smart, riding their cowboy. And uh, they'll be uh, heading towards Brisbane for that call. Uh, Graham Hughes, I just wonder your thoughts on the, the way this match has turned out. Well, I think quite remarkable, this one. Uh, I think this has been a terrific final from the start for New Zealand Maori. 
And then the New Zealand 13, sheer weight of possession, Lowy getting them back into this one. And I mean, you've probably got to stay with them as the strong favourites to finish, especially seeing as the New Zealand Maori are down to 12 men anyway with the send-off of Beasley. Yeah, and also in the second half, I think that the New Zealand 13 have played with far more um, uh, fluency with whatever they've tried to do. They've supported one, of the, one another more. There's been more built ball movement. They've attacked the fringes much better. And, and they have looked the stronger side in the second half. What about the big one tomorrow night? Being an honorary Queenslander and all? Well, particularly with the way that the game finished on Wednesday night, I'm hoping that New South Wales get their beans and get their beans big time. <laughs> so you're going to take it out on the New South Wales Blues and not the, the judges officiating on the game? Well, they've already had their beans. Don't worry about that. But I think that... Um, in front of their home crowd up there in the form that some of those Queensland players are in at the moment, particularly Alfie Langer. Very hard to see New South Wales getting on top of them. No doubt the Blues will miss Ricky Stewart. Tukri Barlow, who I mentioned just before the stoppage, he and Dean Clark really do need to take over as far as well, he needs the ruck those, situation is concerned. He needs some darts out of dummy half. Just put a bit of hesitation in the New Zealand 13 marker defence. He's a capable player. Very impressed with what I've seen of him so far in this tournament. He's been a bit quiet, I feel, today. But he is a capable player and he can turn the game back in the Maori's favour. Well, they just haven't had chances at the other end. I mean, they've had to defend and defend and defend. Yep. The field position is the thing in, in any game. If you play the game in the opponent's half... Well, obviously it's going to be much easier because you don't have to run so far when you've got the ball. But, um, it's, it's been a cruel cruel day for the Marrows because they have played some enterprising footy and their defence has been so stout on their own goal line. Now playing one man down, they've, they've, it's been a courageous performance from them. But they have only got themselves to blame for the mess that they are in at the moment as far as the scoreboard does go. Because they've been a little careless with some of the penalties they've given away. That man in the centre of screen, Fuss, had a strong game of far. He's a real strong player. He's had a lot of knee injuries in his career, but he's overcome them. He loves these tough situations. He's an old-fashioned front row. He's a player that can put a bit of fear into a lineup because you've noticed a lot of the players going high on him, which means they just really didn't want to back themselves down low. Well, he's got a good hip movement, and, and uh, a lot of players that do try and tackle him low cop one of his hips. And uh, end up with a thick ear. But really, it is the only way to tackle a man of Fusa as far as size and ability. Coglin is back out there after being stitched up. Just remember that the New Zealand 13 went into this one without Shane Endicott with a knee injury. They lost their skipper Aaron Whitaker midway through the first half. Now he's called both captains back again. Fellas, ten minutes to go. I know there's going to be a bit of emotion, all right? We don't want no one bloody hurt, but it's to work out that way, eh? Let's just play footy, eh? All right? We'll just wait for the ambulances off the field. So right? young Joe Hodge. Wait for the ambulances off. After so much time with the medical staff. Yeah. We won't be starting until it's off, OK? been a very important Great game the final of this off, okay. Oceania challenge and a lot of pressure on this man Jim Stokes the referee yes yeah, certainly is has been involved in a couple of controversial things um, at this level of footy it's um, very very important that you have the good men in there, out there that can handle the pressure He's probably made a couple of little blues that when he reflects on the game, he may have handled slightly differently if he had the opportunity again. Still waiting for the ambulance to get off the field. It's still in the end goal area at the moment. So it's a tough call for both teams who have been so impressive throughout the week. 
low scoring final by comparison to all the other games yeah well it's a reflection of the intensity both sides have shown in defense Pietro Alcassini he is, he's had a great tournament the tougher the better he might finish up it's the full time siren sounds as a skipper on field skipper of the champs well anything he receives from the game as far as trophies go he certainly has earned it because uh, he puts his body on the line week in week out doesn't know the meaning of backwards Well, they all do. All rugby league players do. Certainly do. It's the, a hard game. Hardest, fastest physical contact game in the world, in my opinion. And there's not just the crowd here that are... And opponents and teammates on field here at Carlaw that are wishing all the best to Joe Hodge, but everybody... Yeah, certainly all our viewers I'm sure will be wishing the same things if we do have any news that we can bring you at any stage we will try to do that so it goes back down now to 12 teammates of Joe Hodge in the New Zealand Maori side that are looking for something to turn around in the last 10 minutes of this 97 final. Can they produce what would be one of the most remarkable victories of all time? Yeah, they're going to have to dig deep to do it. And um, I mean, if there's any professionalism about the New Zealand 13 side, they won't allow it to happen because they've got the advantage of an extra player. They are in front. They're in the box seat. All they've got to do is defend well and be positive when they've got the ball. No silly penalties. Kennedy. No doubt that there will be a lot of emotion on the mind of the New Zealand Maori players. Ramsey. Barlow. Down near the sideline. Back for Clark. Ramsey will be finished up. But confidently they take it to the 30. It is the last tackle. Edwards to settle on the midfield bomb off the side of the boot. They need to shift quickly. Need to unload it, Casino Doyle, if he can. Loses it. Lost forward, that'll be zero. And it will be up to the New Zealand 13 now to protect the ball and not make any mistakes at their own end. Yeah, well, certainly, they're going to be on, on the end of some fierce tackling, I'd say, from the Maori side now, and they've got to make sure they do control the ball. But they can't go into their shell also. Field position is just as important to them. They've got to try and finish this set of six tackles down the Maori end of the park. A converted try in it at 14-9 in favour of the New Zealand 13. Eight and a half minutes. Hanare. Bin Fay. Right on the 50. Nouveau for Williams. Afoa. Thought better of trying to push any pass. Nouveau down. Deep to the corner, exactly where they want it. Casino Doyle. Hold zero! Here we are, here we are, here. Still time. And they can't afford to do that. They do have to just open the ball up now. Ramsey. Just get into touch mode. Just keep the ball alive. Just like this. Yep. Back on the inside. Well picked up on the run. Great hands from Dean Clark, the skipper. They're rushing. They're trying to come up with a quick play of the balls as well. Wide. Barlow. No, Shepard. There was no one there. He's trapped. He was trying to push it back. Here we are. Get it back. Get it back. But they are starting to support each other. Mike Luke. New Zealand 13 can't afford to sit back in defence here. They've got to attack, move up, both sides of the ruck. Edwards, trapped, still keeps it alive. Tamahohaya. Ramsey through his hands. Clark, quick hands. Ramsey again. Watney was pushing it back. And that's still alive. Stalin, Stalani, shut the gate. Stalani's gone. The New Zealand Maori are gone the final's gone.
big celebrations, but it was the situation where they had to keep on pushing passes. It all came unstuck and Stellati with a match winner. Well, they did have to keep pushing their passes. They have kept it alive here. Eventually, they ran out of players. They're doing well to keep the ball alive at this stage. New Zealand 13 defence just standing and looking at them. But eventually, they do run out of players. There's more defence players in there than there is attackers. Stellati on the spot there. Picked up the ball, and he has got some pace, this kid. He can, just puts his foot, foot down and scorches the grass. Kennedy can move as well. Stellati had a couple of metres start on him and he nearly matched it at the death but his second try of the challenge the most important one of the week the one that will win it well new zealand 13 deserved winners out here this afternoon but you've got to congratulate the new zealand Mary. they've certainly played a major part in this game and um, they played very attractive football when they got the opportunity but 12 on the 13 you just can't do it in the end 20 points to nine Probably an unfair scoreline on the New Zealand Marys team. But Without a doubt. It's been a real endurance test for them because they've played at the wrong end of Carlo Park for most of the final. And there will be a lot of chat about some controversial decisions going against them. They have at times. Unfortunately, they let themselves down by trying to referee the game. Yeah, they have been. But anyhow, that's footy. And you more often than not see it happen in Help finals through, football. Yeah, sometimes foot football players' minds do seem to go into neutral at times, and um, that's when they let themselves off. down because they're not... The cogs aren't meshing properly and they're not thinking properly. Love to see them score. Henry. Inside the last five. Scoreline. No way, shape or form reflecting a tough final. Edwards got the opening try and they led 9-0 at one stage. Last tackle. In front, we have all 10 metres. Getting this one away from Coglin. Work out your 10, winger. Now you're on. And Coglin decides to put the foot down, finishing up on his own 30. It is a tribute to the fitness and stamina of all these players that have taken part in the tournament because they've certainly played a lot of minutes of footy out there. Particularly when we look at the uh, situation over in Australia, if the players have to play twice a week, they whinge for months about it. I'll pass your thoughts on back across the Tasman. Sets of six starting to square up, but we keep on reminding you that New Zealand Maori have had to bring it away from their own side of the 50 for most of that. Barlow for Edwards. Thrown to ground by his opposite, Williams. Williams is a player that's played very well in the second half for the New Zealand 13. Not a big guy, but he's done a good little general's job out there steering the team around the park. Ramsey, great trier all week long. Tomaho Haya, his kicking has been terrific and support play. Watner. Excellent in that opening try for the Maori. Edwards still keeping it alive. Knocked down by the New Zealand 13. And a chance maybe to finish up with some scoring for the New Zealand Maori. Well, in a strong attacking position here. They possibly are able to get a reflection on that scoreline that will be... Get more form. like it should be. This one was knocked down as they tried to push the pass. Knocked down by a foe. Ramsey. One. Hands off. Get off him. Get off. Clark was calling for it. Ricky Henry decided to go the other way. Help! Leave him. Leave him. Couple of minutes only. What an name. An arm wrestle with Occasini. He nearly rolled out of that with a chance to put it over. Henry turning in the tackle on the line. He's got to try. They're going to rush back. And would you believe there's going to be some nail-biting seconds still to the finish. So they'll hurry. Need to just 
put this one straight between the posts, get back to halfway. Ohio does just that, he gets the goal. Henry just turned in the tackle of Coughlin, landed on the chalk, momentum took him across as well. So if you wanted a true reflection in the scoreline of this final, this try from Henry is going to set it up for you. Now, no doubt, Lowy, short kickoff on here. Well, that's what it should be. But okay. well done, Ricky Henry. They chip. To, yep. They've got it back. He touched it before it went down. Now, I think it might have touched his knee. That was just touched his leg. Hard luck. bad luck because they worked it so well. The ball actually bounced back one part of it. Was hard luck, but good thinking. Yep. Could have given us another nail-biting finish as of last Wednesday night. Remarkable. Terrific courage in defeat here from New Zealand, Maori. I think both coaches also have done a fine job. Gary Campbell. Cameron Bell both done a fine job motivating their players for the week. That's it. A tough final, controversial in so many ways. New Zealand Maori having to fight right to the finish with only 12 men after Beasley was sent off just after half time for a high tackle. Tremendous performance from them, but New Zealand 13 grab the final and become the champs of the Oceania Challenge in 1997. Probably the far greater experience right through their lineup showing in the second half. Yeah, well, they've certainly got players sprinkled through their lineup who have had experience in first grade, and um, that, that told in the end. 2015, the New Zealand 13. Let's take you down to Stephen McIver. Thanks, Graham. Enjoy the flight back to Brisbane with uh, Lowe and yourself. I look forward to your call tomorrow night, New South Wales versus Queensland. With me, I have the victorious skipper that didn't spend too much time on the field for New Zealand 13. Back from a bit of a whack. You look uh, like you've been in the battles. How are you feeling, Aaron? How's the head? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, they just wouldn't let me back on due to concussion, so safety reasons. So it's not going back on. Normal stand-down period, two to three weeks. Well, yeah, hopefully I'll get a... Uh, a check from the doctor and be back ready to play against Canberra next week. Let's just briefly talk about the week for the New Zealand 13. You went in, many say, as maybe underdogs, but revenge has been the key now from that uh, fortnight ago at Ericsson. Yeah, you know, we, we uh, went into that game as, as a warm-up game. We did want to win it, but, you know, credit to the Marys. They, they you know, they beat us 21-20, but uh, when, it, when it comes to the crunch, you know, today was the final, and that's really what we wanted, and that's what we come up with. Congratulations, it's been a long, tough week for you, but you come out winners and enjoy the showers and the beers maybe afterwards. Yeah, I won't be having too many beers, but thanks to Sky. Cheers. Thanks. All right, uh, Aaron Whitaker, the captain of the New Zealand 13, victorious over the New Zealand Maoris, who have been bravely led by Dean Clark this week, who was obviously very disappointed to playing with 12 men. But boy, you played some good footy this week, Dean. Yeah, um, we can be pleased with our performance throughout the whole tournament. Um, that's one thing Cam stressed to us, uh, we have played well. Um, I just think we can, hope we can carry on from here. We've got a game against Western Samoa coming up. Um, I think hope we can just stay, stay together. Dean, I know I was, uh, had a lot to think about that break when they took Joe off the field. What were you saying during that time? Oh, well, I was just trying to get the boys, just try and try to keep their minds on the job, stay focused. Uh, we've still got had 10 minutes to play. Um, we found it hard, 12 men with about 40 minutes, and that was, can't do it against a side like New Zealand 13. Um, a few courts didn't go away, but that's less football. But you've enjoyed the four days of the Oceania tournament, and it is a good thing for the league? Oh, yeah, definitely, especially with all the Pacific Islands that, that participated. Um, it was a good tournament. There's was um, good football played, a lot of flair, and um, I'm sure there'll be a few uh, scouts here that probably pick up a few players from here too. Well, you're looking at some scouts yourself? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not at this stage, mate. Yeah. Mate, thanks for spending some time with us, and congratulations on a good week. Thanks very much. Cheers. Dean Clark here is the captain of the New Zealand Māori, beaten 15-20 to 20 by the New Zealand 13. Uh, two tries to Paul Stilardi for the New Zealand 13, and congratulations, Paul. A, a nice uh, day for you. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Yeah. Boys went well today. The forwards got us going. The back's just finished it for us, yeah. It's been a pretty interesting year for you, coming out from reserve grade, starting to play first for the Auckland Warriors, now playing for the New Zealand 13. What do you put it down to? Um, I don't know. I just coaching stuff, they gave me a chance, gave me the opportunity, and I just took it, you know. Some say you wouldn't be the biggest winger around here. Are you finding some of these big boys coming down on you a bit tough? Yeah, well, it's tough. I always come out bruised up, but I just give them all. Yeah. Just for your own uh, your own career, what does this uh, win for the New Zealand 13 mean to you? Oh, it means a lot to me. Eh? It's the first time I've made a New Zealand side, and really uh, proud to be in the side. Boys are 
Well, the boys are proud. You look time. like you're itching to get and start celebrating. Congratulations yeah. on the two tries and the win, Paul. Oh, thanks, mate. Yeah. Paul Stellati, the New Zealand 13 winger who bagged two tries for the New Zealand 13 and is also playing first grade for the Auckland Warriors. Well, that wraps up four days of really good football, namely the Oceania Tournament for 1997. Winners today also Fiji got, uh, got into fifth place and Papua New Guinea got into third place in their playoff matches. Well, it all started at midday today and there we have it. The New Zealand 13 victorious over New Zealand Māori in the final of the 1997 Oceania Tournament brought to you by Sky Television and Super League. Don't